Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. Today we delight in the promise that God's Spirit unites us and pray for the power of that Spirit to stir the word, prayer, remembrance, wherever you are worshiping. If you're not from Springdale Lutheran Church, we welcome you and are delighted that you're joining us. Springdale is a congregation of the ELCA in, in the country southeast of Sioux Falls. The psalm today is going to say, we, we recount to generations to come the wonderful deeds of God. This fall, Springdale hosted a conversation project between members of our congregation and young adults in our community. Josh Barrows ably coordinated that effort, and this morning he and I are offering a dialogue sermon so that you can all hear about this marvelous power when we recount the deeds of God between the generations. We hope you enjoy it and are eager to continue this effort as a congregation. We worship as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join in the gathering song. God led the Israelites out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land through the water of the Red Sea. We will be delivered from the power of sin and death into your glorious gifts of freedom and life. And as your son was baptized in the Jordan, we pray again this day that we hear your voice saying to us, you are God's beloved children. Lord, stir our remembrance of water and word that we, we know your claim on our lives and serve you in thought and word and deed. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join in the prayer of remembrance. God, stir your word to bring your people and your church to life anew. Renew, reform, and resurrect us until with all your saints we breathe the love of your Son Jesus Christ, for all your people. Our hearts thirst for you. Our very souls yearn for your presence and promise. Awaken us to this gift of baptism each day. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We'll sing our hymn of praise, Earth and All Stars.
join together in praying the prayer of the day. God of the ages, you bless your people with both roots and wings. Anchor us in the wisdom and faith of the ages and free us with the hope and promise of the young. We pray for the church's ministry uniting and strengthening us through your word and one another. In Jesus' name, amen. children's sermon this morning is going to be the story of Eli and Samuel. Students, especially confirmation students, know that we're going to be studying this story in the upcoming weeks in confirmation. Samuel was about 12 years old and he was serving in the temple of God where Eli served. So he was Eli's assistant. Eli laid in his room and Samuel, Samuel laid in the temple. One night, Samuel was lying there awake, and he heard a voice say, Samuel, Samuel. So he ran to Eli and said, Eli, you called. Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. So Samuel went back to his place, and in a few minutes, heard a voice again, Samuel, Samuel. He ran again to Eli. Eli said, Samuel, I did not call you. Go to your rest. The third time, Samuel heard the voice. Samuel, Samuel, ran to Eli. Eli perceived that God was speaking to the boy. He says, so Eli said, go back to your place, Samuel. And when the voice cries again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Samuel went back to his bed, and it wasn't long till he heard the voice again. Samuel, Samuel, he said. And, and Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. At that point, God told Samuel how distressed he was with the house of Eli. Eli's children were not continuing the legacy of, of God's faithfulness. And God said, tell, e tell Eli that I will come to destroy his house because of this abandonment. The next morning, Eli said to Samuel, what did the Lord say to you? And Samuel told him. Eli heard it and said, let the Lord do what is right. 
I think this story is rich for the way it tells us we need each other. On the one hand, Samuel needed Eli to let him know that God was speaking, how it is that, that God speaks. But in other ways, Eli needed Samuel and the wisdom that God gave to him when he made him a prophet so he could know what, what was to become of his house, what he needed to do. It's powerful in this story that Eli accepts this word and that it comes from a very young person. So I hope you'll remember the story of Eli and Samuel and that it helps all of us learn to listen for God and to listen to one another and the way God speaks through us. That's the children's sermon for today. We're going to continue now before the other sermon by singing the first two verses of Born and Cry, number 732. In terms of the gospel that Joe read for us this morning, one of my fears between the generations is that both generations assume it's the other generation that runs out of oil. I sometimes hear that when older people are talking about the young and the things they're doing or not doing, and it's like they aren't going to have any fuel in their lamp. But Josh, sometimes I notice that young people are willing to return the favor and think we're so stuck in our old patterns that are going to be empty that we are the ones who don't have any oil. Maybe you can help us, Josh, hear how the psalm speaks to this. So the psalm describes exactly why dialogues like this matter. It describes teaching from generation to generation. It was really fun to hear both groups in this project that we did um, offer, believe, offer what we believe about the wonderful works of God. What I think our group really appreciated the most was that the dialogue went both ways. It didn't just go from top down or bottom up, but both ways. And we were all teachers and we were all learners at the same time. I also added the story about Eli and Samuel in our worship this morning including the rough ending when Samuel tells Eli that God told him to warn Eli about destroying his house. Spiritual teachers often talk about growth like an awakening. In the story we hear Eli awakening Samuel to who was speaking, but it was Samuel who awakened Eli to what God had to say. Josh, could you just describe for the folks how we went about this? 
Yeah, so I, I invited seven young adults that I knew, and Pastor Paul invited about the same number from Springdale. And we met on Sunday afternoons for discussions on six different topics. We actually only ended up having five because our sixth one was snowed out. But our topics were community, purpose and meaning, rest and recreation, guilt and grief, and vocation. We started by meeting in separate groups, first discussing and then coming together as one. But as the project kind of went along, we decided to start meeting together the whole time to have whole group discussion. I think my favorite discussion was the discussion on purpose and meaning. Sometimes we get so caught up in the idea of productivity that we think that in order for something to be productive or have meaning, we have to be doing something. Through this conversation, I was reminded that purpose is tied to reflection and that sometimes we find that rest and joy are both incredibly purposeful. And these things are even better when they're done among other people. Sometimes it feels like we're doing nothing, but it was helpful and good to have conversation on these days with the people around us. And it reminded me that purpose doesn't always have to be seen as productive. And what's more is we found joy in being together and discussing with others. Did you have a favorite topic? Actually, Josh, I had two, and for opposite reasons. I really liked the discussion we had about rest and recreation, because as we, as we talked around the circle about how busy we are and how hard it is to stop, to reflect, to really practice Sabbath as God commands, it was clear that there was no distinction between the generations. All of us were struggling with that. And all of us are aware of how technology is spinning that, spinning the world faster constantly with us, 24-7, making it harder yet to quiet down and reflect. It was, it was a great discussion. I thought it was really powerful across the, the generations to learn that. But I also really liked the discussion on vocation, because you young adults came with such honest questions about how hard it is to figure out what you're called to do. And I hope you heard those of us who are further into those questions remembering and appreciating how hard it is to know what to do, how, how hard it is to figure out. But, but I also hope you were able to hear from us that, that things do work out and there are surprises that you can't even anticipate when you take a first step. So, in, in one of the discussions, it was a similarity, and in the second, it was the contrast, but both were really good. What do you think you learned from this project, Josh? This project reminded me that to seek truth is to seek God, and that's exactly what we were doing. I learned that sometimes the only way to understand my ideas was to hear them repeated back to me through somebody else's words. Somebody who has a different perspective and has different experiences life, in life. The power of one generation being able to interpret the words that they're hearing from another generation, I think served and still serves to help refine both generations. Sometimes we need others to help us interpret what we are seeing, saying, and thinking in the world. We see this in the Eli and Samuel story. Eli and help Samuel interpret the voice he hears in the night. But Samuel also helps Eli interpret that voice for his own house. He, sh he has shown that the word of the Lord through Eli's teaching, but he shows Eli the word of the Lord through God. We can lean on one another in a similar way. We can lean on one another to interpret what we're hearing and seeing in the world we're eager to be in these communities, and we build each other up, and sometimes we don't understand what's going on, and we need to have the clarity that comes from hearing those words be repeated back to us through our, own, through our, through our conversation. What did you learn, Pastor Paul? Well, I learned how important it is to have a sacred text in common, the Bible that has endured thousands of years to to raise and inform something that was, was in between us, so it wasn't just a swapping of opinions. 
and more contemporary voices also contributed in that way. But, but I thought it was really significant that we have something together that we're striving toward, even from different perspectives. I also learned a lot about Springdale. I felt like the longer the project went on, the clearer it was to me that the most important thing we were doing was getting our point out. Springdale is nothing if not a congregation of deep, caring relationships. And it's helped me know how to talk about the church. Like you talk about getting stuck in productivity, I think sometimes the church gets stuck thinking about programs. Well, the church need not be programs. It can be this relational approach to learning and prayer. And already I've had a couple of, of times um, to share that with others. I was really thrilled when Springdale members who participated told me afterwards that they wished we regularly had opportunities like this to discuss. And I think we're going to be looking at that as an alternative. When we finished up and you talked to participants, what did you hear from them, Josh? The first thing I heard was that people were just joyful to meet and spend time with people in the other generation. In conversations with people that I had after, after we wrapped up the project, I heard that people were inspired by one another to think through these topics in their own lives. A wonderful component of church in general is community. And right now, to be honest, with COVID-19, community is scarce. It's difficult to gather, there are restrictions. People were grateful for the opportunity to have a true community conversation. We heard from participants that this filled a gap in their lives because it's so rare for generations to be able to have honest, intentional conversations like this in everyday life. But these intentional conversations with people in another generation, even though they don't happen very often, they are very valuable and people understand and recognize that there is, there is value to having these. It was marvelous to see how everyone seemed to have some similarities, but then also some differences as well. Did you hear anything different from participants? Well, I certainly heard the joy. I was thrilled to hear young adults to a number talk about how much they enjoyed coming together. One of them told me that she looked forward to Sunday afternoon all week long, knowing she would have this chance to come and talk. And I, they said they liked being outside, so COVID has given us some new and surprising gifts. I think when we think about young people looking forward to the weekend, we don't assume they're thinking about a church discussion on Sunday afternoon. Another really powerful voice for me was a, a young man who said that he, re, he was reminded how important these topics are and admitted that in the busyness of life, he doesn't think about them that much. But it, it called him to thinking about that and to being more intentional, both by himself and with others, in thinking about that. Uh, what do you see as some next steps? I think an important next step is that, you know, just understanding that conversations like this are opportunities for where learning can extend beyond our formal religious education. Most people end confirmation around 12 or 13 years old, and oftentimes this is the last formal education that we get in the religious context. And conversations like this and programs like this, Friendly Strangers, provides a dedicated time for people to come together and reason through some really difficult and important topics of discussion. It's, it was a time to learn more about um, big issues in our everyday lives, and at the same time, get to know people inside and outside of our communities. So I think that just understanding these conversations as, as a way to further our religious education beyond the formal religious education that we've had is a really important next step. Josh, when you say that, I do feel like Eli. Um, clearly, God is speaking to you and to your peers, and we thank you for, that was a gift to us as a congregation. Um, I think we have a unanimous conclusion to try it again, and I look forward to that. As you think about the folks worshiping with us via this tape, what do you, what do you want to tell them is the takeaway? I think that, you know, Pastor Paul alluded to this before, but 
we don't always talk about difficult subjects or these big kind of overarching topics. Um, but these, these conversations, they, they have real everyday implications. And so, and when we encounter these subjects in everyday, sometimes we aren't prepared for them. We haven't had those conversations. I'm grateful for when the church equips me to know what I believe and, you know, understand my own belief system. And so experiences like this can help us work through some of these questions before we encounter them in every day, when we encounter grief or loss, or we consider community and vocation, we're better equipped to deal with them when we've had conversations in a specific religious context, and we have interpreters helping us understand our own thoughts. As Pastor Paul said earlier, we don't talk about these big questions openly very often, and sometimes we don't even realize that we're not talking about them. But intentional conversations like these, about these topics, press me to know how to respond to the very real topics that we encounter every single day. We'll end where we began, hoping that you hear the generations recounting the wonderful deeds of God. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. We'll sing verse 3 of the hymn. Thank you. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. calling us together and making us church. Bless Springdale as we tell you your wonderful deeds to one another and share them with others. We thank you for the openness of young adults to lead us, and we pray for your common ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our Lord. prayer. God, awaken us to your promise for those who are suffering. Help us hold Judy, Robin, Jerry, Aline, Scott, Penny, Mei Lu, Shiva, 
Nancy, Skyler, Dwayne Davis, Julie, and Dorothy in your loving, healing care. We pray for all who suffer from COVID and for all who care for them. Help us hear the concerns of caregivers and do our part to help one another stay healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God awakens us to your promise in the changing seasons. We thank you again for the harvest and, the, and for all who have labored for it. We thank you for a bonus week of fall this week, especially for the beauty and warmth of the sun. Prepare us now for winter. Help winter teach us the importance of dormancy, quiet, darkness, and rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, awaken us to the promise and purpose for your world, and especially our country. We thank you for democracy, freedom, and the power of voting. We pray for your promise to sustain us in waiting and in next steps. Call all of us to do our part to create peace in our communities and world, especially in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. peace of the Lord be with you all. And also and with you. you. May you share a sign of peace or pray for peace with all who are with you. Peace. 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 We'll now um, have a time of offering in the worship. Um, the offering is in the worship as a reminder to us that all that we have and all that we are is a gift from God, as is the call to share who we are and what we have. We thank you for your support of ministry in whatever form and especially for your support of our congregation it's essential in this difficult time that we continue that support so that the ministry can be active and strong uh, the mail is is collected here daily so if you can mail your contribution to the church that is much appreciated we're going to have communion this morning so while the time of offering happens in worship if you would like to um, find bread or a cracker and some juice or wine, you'll be prepared to celebrate the sacrament in your home. If you're worshiping in the parking lot on Sunday morning, an usher will bring the elements to you. We now um, offer ourselves to God in worship and prayer and our gifts. Our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, come to us and teach us to pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may take the bread, the body of Christ is given for you. And the wine, the blood of Christ is shed for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace this day and always. Amen. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Um, we ask you to continue to echo the prayers that Joe led us in this morning as we are mindful that many people are ill, that our country is waiting to see the steps for a new transition in leadership, um, be in prayer for one another um, in this time. Thanks to Josh again for joining us in worship and to all the participants in Friendly Strangers this fall. I hope you can tell that it was really a marvelous experience. Um, our sending hymn is Go My Children, number 543, verse one. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.